Cheap advertisements for the film playing at the local Bijou have become one of the fastest appreciating areas of collectible art. For you, sir, 32,000. This poster from The Mummy, made in 1932 and also starring Karloff, recently sold at Sotheby's for $458,000. This more than doubled the highest price previously paid for a movie poster for the 1931 release of Frankenstein. And the posters that bring the highest prices are the ones for horror movies. No, not romances, not action pictures, but horror. Well, I think the reason horror posters are widely considered to bring the highest prices and be the most sought after, there's a number of reasons. Um, I think the collectors, first of all, are the most passionate as opposed to other genres. Stephen Fischler is a dealer in vintage comics, but his real passion is collecting horror movie posters. About five years ago, I got a hold of an original Frankenstein press book, which is a book that was put out in 1931 to show the theaters what posters were coming out for the movie that year. Inside the inside cover is where I first saw the six sheet pictured. I and a number of other collectors said, if that was ever found in a theater, in a barn, in an attic, who knows where, that would be the ultimate find. For each film, there were a number of different sizes of posters created. The one sheet is probably the most common kind of standard size that most people would be familiar with. And then something like the six sheet is a very giant size poster printed in four sections. They would be pasted to something like a billboard. Sometimes it would be pinned up on the outside of the theater. The one sheets were recirculated from theater to theater, traveling along with the film as it made its way through the distribution circuit. But because the six sheets were glued to the wall or billboard, they were necessarily destroyed when removed. And that's why there are so very few of them still in existence. Fischler already had some of the best examples of collectible horror posters decorating the walls of his office in New York. And although he had copies of almost all the classic horror titles, he did not have anything from the original version of Frankenstein. The six known copies of the one sheet were already spoken for. And the six sheet pictured in the press book, well, that was one he could only dream of. Even though it's pictured in black and white here, I can envision what it would look like in color. And I said, I'd love to find that poster someday. Little did Fischler know that he was to get his wish, almost. Somewhere in Northern California, at a weekend tag sale, a purchase was being made on some used luggage. When the purchaser finally got home, he discovered that one item, a beat up old briefcase, had locks that were frozen tight. Prying it open, he discovered an old poster inside. Actually, he discovered four movie posters in the case, all neatly folded on top of each other, and all in immaculate condition. Opening them, he had no idea what they were. None seemed complete. That was until he decided to lay them out on the floor and realized it wasn't four posters, it was one poster made up of four separate sections. The purchaser, knowing he might have something unusual, found the name of collector Steve Fischler on the internet and gave him a call. Hi there, can I speak to Mr. Stephen Fischler? Steve. The caller said he had a poster he wanted to sell, a Frankenstein poster for the 1931 Universal release. I generally don't get excited because in 30 seconds or a minute, I'll find out it's a reissue. I have a series of questions that I'll ask somebody. Well, where exactly did you get the poster? I asked this person, was the poster a color poster? And he said, yes, it was, which is a good answer. I said, is it a stone litho poster? He had no idea what the word stone litho meant. He saw the word Morgan litho written in the corner, and he told me that, which is the original printing company for the original Universal posters from the 30s, which was a good answer. This was starting to get interesting. The Fischler needed to know more. And then I asked him, is Frankenstein pictured in the left-hand side of the poster? He says, yes, which is what the original one sheet looked like from 1931. There's about six known copies of that poster. It's worth about 150 to 200,000. I'm getting very excited at this point. I then asked him, is he pictured in a little circle at the bottom left-hand corner? He goes, oh, no, he's not a circle. He's the entire left side of the poster. He said, entire left side of the poster? I, I, what size is this poster? It, it says it's a six sheet. Fischler is stopped cold. This 
is a very, very good answer. No known copy of any sick sheet from any early Universal horror movie has ever been found. That's how rare they are. To find one from a movie such as Frankenstein would be the ultimate. And I then ask him, is there a bride, a woman in a bridal gown on the right-hand side? And he says, yes! He's shocked that I know this. And in a space of one minute, going from taking a routine phone call, I realize that this is the phone call. Six sheets were so large, they were printed in pieces. Everything Fischler was being told was a perfect description of one. He pleaded with the caller to send a picture. This would be the final proof. When the photo arrived, he knew it was the real thing. He could see that Karloff took up the entire left side of the poster, just like the picture in the press book. Fischler was looking at a photograph of the very rarest of movie posters, one that until this moment, no one knew even existed. While he wouldn't say what he paid for the poster, he's made it more than worthwhile for the purchaser. It is very rare that somebody can go to a tag sale, a flea market, an auction, and buy something for nothing. And this is really what they paid for it is absolutely nothing. And find out it's worth 100000 200000 Fischler now has what most experts agree is the most valuable movie poster ever. And Fischler knows why. What makes the Frankenstein six sheet so uh, exciting is the image that it has. The image is Frankenstein, you know, in his essence, standing there in Frankenstein's laboratory with a skeleton in the background, looking at a horrified bride of Frankenstein, which is what the original movie had. The look in Frankenstein's eyes in this poster is just so eerie. He appears to be looking at absolutely nothing. He appears to be completely dead. I think Frankenstein, the Frankenstein six sheet, could certainly create a new world record at auction, basically because it is one of a kind. It is a large size poster, six sheet. The graphics on it are, are wonderful, and it's most likely impossible to ever find another one. If the one sheet mummy poster sold for 450,000, and there are two of those, this larger and totally unique six sheet has an estimated value of $600,000. Only Stephen Fischler insists he will never sell his Frankenstein. In fact, it's only been out of his possession for a brief appearance at the Whitney Museum in New York. If I sell a poster like this with the purpose of collecting, this is what I'm collecting for. Not only is this the greatest poster ever found of any type, movie or otherwise, but it's also the greatest poster that could have ever been found. There's nothing that would really top this one. It is the ultimate.